This is a broken laptop. Let's fix it. So what we're dealing with here is um, an HP ProBook 450. Doesn't start, doesn't do anything when you pre press the power button. Almost certainly going to be some kind of power delivery issue, which is my specialty. First of all, a little pro tip for whenever you, um, you give your laptop to a laptop repair service, uh, don't leave in your hard drive. Especially on this Pro Book, it's very easy to get open and uh, very easy to remove the hard drive. So here's the main circuit board. I I kind of assumed that uh, uh, the guy he said he already opened the laptop up and didn't really see anything super broken. So it can't really be something that's entirely blown up, which means it's going to have to be something electrical and the circuit board will have to come out, essentially the main board. So um, just a, a very quick overview of this. It's actually pretty simple, as most laptops are. Uh, power comes in here. Uh, this is the DC jack, and here is the battery power coming in. Uh, there is clearly just some power switching here. So I see here a MOSFET and here two MOSFETs. And there's clearly a DDR um, power supply here and there's the CPU power supply here and the rest is on the reverse side uh, we have some more power circuitry here which uh, just because of the closeness to the display connector uh, I assume this has to do with the display and then under here I assume there's some more uh, CPU or PCH circuitry and then there is some circuitry around the PCH here as well so that's basically it. that's all the power stuff and as with anything that doesn't immediately start uh, thou shalt check voltages so uh, I will just connect it up and see if any voltages are present so first of all we have to check the power adapter because he said it worked but uh, you never really know and it does indeed work. It's 19.7 volts, which is nominal for uh, HP and Dell power adapters. So let's just plug it in. Well, the fan is not doing anything. And if I push the power button, absolutely nothing happens. So let's just, uh, essentially what you do is you look at all the um, capacitors and see if there is any voltage present. And actually I'm going to turn it around, look at the power switching first. Uh, this will be the input. Ah, uh, that's interesting, right? We see that it's attempting some some voltage is attempting to charge, but nothing is actually happening. So I am almost one hundred percent certain that this is the issue. Now I'm interested to know if there's actually any power coming in or that the power adapter is being short-circuited. Here we have access to the pins of the power input. Yeah, it definitely looks like the power adapter is actually being short-circuited. So there's a short circuit here, somewhere, which is almost certainly one of the MOSFETs. So um, we're just going to do Going to disconnect and see if one of the obvious power MOSFETs here is clearly short circuited. Yeah, this one, this MOSFET definitely is broken. Uh, it is short circuited. MOSFETs uh, fail in short circuit. Um, looks like a PQFN 33 type dealio so what we can possibly do is just 
uh, transport the this MOSFET here, which seems to be identical, to there, and see if the unit powers up. So the main issue we're dealing we're, uh, with here uh, when repairing is that we have these plastic connectors very close to where we want to solder. We want to solder here and here. And these plastic connectors, if I use my hot air, uh, they're going to melt, which is a big pain in the ass. So I will have to put a thermal barrier here, uh, which is going to be uh, a few layers of Kapton tape and then a little piece of metal to deflect away the heat. Uh, and the same on this side. And then I'll be able to desolder the defective MOSFET, desolder the good MOSFET, and transport it over to here. Yeah. Hmm. Don't really have a good camera setup for soldering, so. There are these big power planes that run into these MOSFETs, so the MOSFETs, the whole area has to be heated quite thoroughly before the MOSFETs will uh, desolder. That one be soldered. This one, then we're going to need some flux to solder it back down just to make sure it will stick. We don't actually need extra solder. Where's my flux pen? There we go. Nice and hot. There we go, that's it. <coughs> now we just let it cool off slowly and try it out. So let's see if it actually works. Let's connect up the power and see if the power supply is still being short circuited. Apparently it still is, but less so. So apparently there's more at work here. Looking around the board, I don't immediately see anything that short circuits. I do see that there is definitely a short circuit. If I, if I try out the input capacitors for the uh, CPU VRM, this is definitely a short circuit. So there is a short circuit on the main uh, power line, but it's not clear which component is uh, causing it. So uh, the course of action here is to trace it out, which I usually do with uh, my thermal camera and a power source uh, that essentially will, whatever is causing the short circuit is going to heat up if I put power on the board. So let's try that. There is very clearly something heating up here near the um, battery. There's no immediate component on this side, but I think it's on the other side. So let me just disconnect the power. Yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah. Seems to be the TPS five one three six seven. Let me just see what that does. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, actually record the soldering process itself, but it was kind of involved because um, this motherboard has very thick power planes. Uh, it's very hard to heat up. I actually had to use two hot air guns. Uh, to get this chip on. But uh, anyway, I replaced the chip and now it's time to test, see whether it boots. Of course, test number one is, do we still have the short present? And the easiest way to do to test that is to, well, I've, I've put that back the contacts and I'll just 
turn on my, that's not sharp, my power supply. And, um, yeah, there still seems to be quite a lot of current going somewhere. So let's just uh, look at this with the thermal camera. I have removed the chip. The chip is actually here and two accompanying capacitors. The short is still there. So now I'm going to turn on the power supply and see what else heats up. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm not sure if it's actually a single component. Yeah, if anything, it seems to be this capacitor here. So let's remove that as well. See if we get any closer. And another try. Ooh, no more short. So it was actually the capacitor that was broken. So I'm going to try to trace it out. See if it had any specific important function. And uh, if not, I will probably just replace it with like a one microfarad. I don't know what value it was, but it was definitely shorting. Uh, haven't had a ceramic capacitor fail on me in a long time. So this is kind of an, uh, a strange failure. So yeah, the filled capacitor uh, was here between these contacts. So fairly large, looks like uh, an 0805. And if we just look at a plan form here, if you look at the circuit itself, yeah, honestly, it just looks like decoupling here. Uh, so I don't think this actually has that important of a function. Um, I'm going to put back the chip, so that's at least done. And uh, then just look at the reverse side, see if it needs replacement. And uh, try to boot up the machine. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely just decoupling. Uh, so what you can see here, those two resistors, um, I think their designators are PR4812 and PR4813. Those are reference voltage res resistors. And then there is the capacitor to the top left of that, which is the uh, voltage reference stabilization capacitor. Those seem to be connected, but actually the big capacitor that I removed uh, is only connected between ground and the incoming voltage. So it's purely decoupling. Uh, so I will just replace it with a one microfarad 0805 35 volt capacitor and uh, we'll boot it up. Now, first of all, wait, I've reassembled everything. Uh, let's see if the power supply is still short when I connect it up. Ooh, I saw the fan turning very slightly. And indeed, we have full power supply voltage. So I think it will boot up. Oh, that was another fan turn. I think if I put everything together, it will uh, actually boot up now. Okay, moment of truth. Let's plug it in. Yes, it boots. Awesome. Guess we fixed it. Uh, I'm going to, like everything is loose right now. I'm going to fully assemble it and um, that'll be it, pretty much. Well, everything's back together. 
I put in the hard disk as well. And of course, as any repair job will tell you, uh, of course, everything's still on the hard drive. And it's Windows 7, so even if it has a password, uh, you can trivially get around it. So, good job, nice repair. Let's just check if, yep, trackpad still works. Check if the uh, keyboard still works. Yep. That's not the right password. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, good job. I hope to be able to record some more repairs in the future. Hope you liked it. <laughs>